morning, everyone. We want to welcome you this evening to our service tonight. Thank you for being with us this evening. Hallelujah. We also want to welcome those who is watching this broadcast online. Thank you also for being with us this evening. Amen. And we pray that this service will be a blessing to each of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. God is good. He is a faithful God. He is a answer our prayers. You know, what, whatever concern in you is concern God. And will you truly, sincerely before coming before the Lord and say, Father, I need to know the truth in this area. Guide me, direct me in that truth. Because, see, we are children of God and we be led by the Spirit of God and we consult Him in all of our ways. Amen. So um, this morning, Pastor Larry is ministering to us. We have a wonderful service this morning. If you, um, if you was not here or you didn't watch that service online, you can go back and you can watch it and hear the the word of the Lord. And so, um, yes, and you will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. So by the word. Of God because when we hear the Word of God is always a blessing it's always something new that you hear some you know um, God can speak to directly to your heart and you know and give you confirmation give you encouragement so when we hear the Word of God it is the power in itself to bring the fulfillment in each of our lives so, amen. Well, let's we open up in prayer in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Well, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. We're giving you a praise. We're giving you a glory. We thank you, Lord. You, oh, God Almighty, you are deserve all the praise. You deserve all the glory. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, Father, for everything that you have done, continue to do in each of our lives. And we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, I call up in your name, and I ask you, Lord God, on behalf of your people, everyone who is here this evening, and those who is watching this broadcast i ask you lord god that you speak to us speak to your people and father i thank you in the name of jesus we welcome you holy spirit into this place and father as pastor larry come and he ministering to your people father use him as your instrument as your vessel on behalf of your people and father in the name of Jesus, let your people eyes of understanding has been enlightened. Let your people see and hear your word and receive your word and receive the understanding and the direction for their lives. And we thank you for it, for who you are and for everything you have done, continue to do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Just think about it of the goodness of the Lord. Just think about what you have done toward your life. Just think about where he brought you from as a testimony for his kingdom, who you become, because you are become a new creation in Christ Jesus. And all these things has passed away, because you are new in him. And don't let anyone else to tell you. Are you remember then? But the thing is, you're not the same person when you then. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. And we all have to remember that. What Jesus Christ has done for each of us he paid the price for our sins and we arise in him 
become anew in him. Amen. And as we continue to transform and his image and his likeness become as he is as far as new character, new attributes, because God is good. He is a good God. He is a faithful God. Amen. He is a good God. He is a good father. He is a faithful father. He loves us. He loves his children. Amen. And as we receive that love and receive what he has done, and now we say, Lord, what, what I can do for you? What can I do for your kingdom? I thank you, Lord, that you will give me the vision, that you will give me the provision. Because, see, vision in life is very important. The scripture clearly talk about, without the vision, my people perish. What is the vision? What vision God gave you? Because when he gave you vision, he will give you provision. He will give you the means to fulfill the vision as you continue to step in it and walk by faith and believe that he will provide for that vision. But to make sure that that vision be from him, not your own ambitions and desires and what you can do. Because see, God knows our hearts. He can see why we do what we do to glorify our own egos. Like Pastor talked about this morning, you know, the sin nature, the fallen man. But our job as the people of God to bring glory to Him. His name should be glorified in each of our lives. Everything that we do for His glory. Amen. As we go to school, if you're a child and you still continue, or young adult, continue your education, are you still doing for Him? To bring glory to Him, to be exceedingly knowledgeable in certain professional, certain traits for His glory. Amen. As you are a business owner, you still doing for His glory. Amen. Walking in the excellency as as much you can, and not relying on your own strength and ability, but asking always, God, I need You to accomplish this task. Because as the people of God, we all have a different callings on each of our lives. And every person is very important. No matter where you work, no matter what position you hold. You might start from the little position, you know, and you learn yourself up and up and because see, God is always bringing the increase. But as we continue to humble and wait on Him and believe that He is the one who bring the increase, He is the one who is the bring the promotions. Amen. And that's how you will. It's not about how you increase, but it's about to stay in increase and stay in that position, not to prematurely. To move some in a place that you should maybe not ready for it. Amen. So to wait on God Message. and to walk in with Him and to believe Him that He will guide and direct you and continually open the doors for you because God is a faithful God and He loves you and He wants you to increase. He wants you to be promoted and he wants you to be a head and not a tail above and not beneath that's who he is amen to believe in the big things not to be covered that someone else have well I wish I have this I wish I had this <clears throat> well no wait on God let God bring it to you and he will manifest himself and show himself strong because each of us, we have a different position, different callings. And no matter what call God have for you, that call is important as 
some other call is important. Amen. So God is a good God. So just get ready what the Lord will speak to us tonight. Amen. And um, just um, open your heart, open your spirit to receive. And not just to receive, not just to be here, but to receive into your spirit. And says, Lord, I want to know the truth. And he will give you the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Pastor Larry is here, so he is here to minister unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. to be with you once again to share with you the living word of God amen open your heart and prepare to receive by faith the touch from heaven because I believe Tonight can be your night of receiving God's best. Amen, amen, amen. Okay. So now let's let me set my monitor here. And we're gonna get right into the word. Amen. There we go. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Father, for this opportunity to come once again to share your word. Lord, I pray on behalf of everyone under the sound of my voice. I release my faith right now, Father, and I ask you in Jesus' name that you would move by the power of your spirit and touch every heart touch every soul, bring everyone to the remembrance of your word because your word is the final authority. And as we believe and receive and accept it as you speaking directly to us individually, the promise of your word shall become a living reality in our hearts. Father, we thank you for that and we receive it now by faith in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, thank you for joining us tonight. Now I ask you to touch every heart. Father, I ask you that you would help us to see ourselves as you see us, walking by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Well, glory to God. Welcome to New Life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. Amen. Walking in authority is very powerful. Amen. Because you have the opportunity to release your faith as children of Almighty God. And as children of God, you have the ability to stand in the very presence of God. Why? Because He's your Father. He's your Father. And he desired to see you to stand before him. He desired to meet your every need. He desired to hold you in his, in, your arm, in his arms. Amen. He desired to be there for you when you're going through different, different situations, different, different circumstances in your life. When the enemy attacks your body, he said that he has sent his word to heal you. <coughs> Amen. His word is alive, folks. I'm telling you right now, his word is alive. I am a living, I'm a living witness that his word is alive. Because I know that ever since he healed me, I can't stop talking about it. Amen. And, and the more I talk about it, the more stronger I get in the message. Amen. Why? Because I believe what I preach. I don't just preach just to hear myself preach. 
I believe what I preach. Amen. And I'm I, and I'm living on this word right here on divine health and healing. I'm living what I preach right here. Amen. This is not just something that I think about. This is something that I experience. This is something that I walk in. Amen. So as I re, as I minister to you today, I pray and hope that you have a heart to receive what God is speaking. Because I want to see you coming forth with a testimony. I want to see you coming forth with a testimony. How God healed you, how God delivered you, how God set you free. Amen. So let's get into the word. Amen. I want you to know that it, God wants you to operate from the standpoint of faith. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Hebrew chapter 11, verse number 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. See, when I look at this word hope right here, it's pointing me to the future because I'm hoping for I'm not, I don't have it right now. But at the same time, it says now faith is. See, now is a present tense. Faith is what I'm looking at, and is is also a present tense. Amen. Now faith is. Amen. So when I look at this word right here in, in, in Hebrew chapter 11, verse number one, now faith is. Now I'm looking at when I see that, I'm I, I can I can say it is mine now. I receive it now, amen. Then I then I look at the substance of things hoped for, that putting it somewhere out in the future. Because I'm looking at hope. Hope is not present. Hope is future tense, amen. Because it's something that I have not obtained yet. It's something that I have not received yet. So when I look at it through the eyes of faith, I can look at it through the eyes of faith and I can bring it out of the future into my present with my faith. Acting on the word of God. Because now faith is. God said he sent his word to heal me. So I choose to accept it now. I choose to, I choose to accept it now. Why? Because God said it. I believe what God said. And because I believe what God said. I'm standing on the promise of what God said. See God told me not too long ago. What the, early, the beginning of the year. He told me at the beginning of the year. He said tell my people to prepare themselves. Because there is something coming and it's going to be more terrible, going to be just as harsh or more harsh than COVID-19. And God said, tell my people to prepare themselves by meditating and reading the healing scriptures in my word. For it shall establish a foundation in their hearts. Amen. God wants you to have a foundation of the healing scriptures in your heart. Because when this enemy attacked the body of Christ, or when his enemy attacked the world as it did in 2000, what was that, 2003? When the pandemic came? What year was that? 2003? Not like this. 2019? Yeah, that's right. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> 2000, no, it, 2003, it, was, it couldn't have been 2003 because that was it was it was way after that. It was 2019 because I was just coming back from Indonesia, right? I was just coming back from Indonesia from doing a, a month long meeting, amen. And when I got back to America, it was right before Thanksgiving of 2019, and the pandemic hit. And God telling me to tell you that this thing that is that is coming is going to be. Worse than 2019. It's going to be worse than the pandemic. So God said, tell my people to prepare themselves to establish a foundation of my healing scriptures in their heart and in their spirit. That when this enemy comes against them, the Holy Spirit on the inside of them, because of, my, because of the word, will raise up a standard. Will raise up a standard. Amen. So this is one reason why I've been teaching this. All year, because when God told me that, I've been teaching on healing all year since God told me that. Why? Because I'm, and by me teaching, I'm establishing a foundation in my own heart. Once again, so that when this enemy come, I will be ready myself should I come under attack. I will be ready myself, amen, to be able to stand up against it. Because last year, Mr. Mr. 2019, when the pandemic came, all, a lot of churches closed down. 
We was getting ready to close down too, but God said no. We God won't let us close our church down. Amen. And then there were so many people that came to us. There were so many people calling us for healing. So many people got healed from that. Uh, my God, preachers got healed, calling me for prayer and got healed. Amen. I got. I mean, their families called and asked for prayer for their father, which was a pastor, and he was he was raised up off that for that thing that, that breathing thing. Uh, that that that, that uh, what do you call that thing? Just machine. <laughs> the life support system. I put it that way. He was God delivered him from the life support system. And, and, and that very, I mean, I was out, I, I was praying, then all of a sudden the power of God came into my, I was in my dining room, I sat at my kitchen table, and the power of God came in there so powerful, so strong, my wife jumped up and ran in there. <laughs> she sat down and started praying with me, amen, because the power of God was so strong in my home when, when they would call me to pray for these pastors and, and these people that were sick. And I'm telling you, it was such a, it was such an experience that I will never forget. God said to tell you to prepare yourself because something worse is coming down the pipeline and he don't want you to be caught off guard. He doesn't want you to be caught off guard. So begin to arm yourself. Begin to read the healing scriptures. If you don't know where to find them at, just put it in your search in, 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 the, in your search and uh, you, you get all the healing scriptures you, you, can, you, you need. Amen. Or you can look at the back of your Bible, the concordance of your Bible. You can get them that way also. That's what I did. My very first time, because he, back when God first started dealing with me by healing, I didn't have no computer. I had to read everything that I did, and I wrote it down. I went to the back of my Bible, and I wrote down every scripture pertaining to healing and healed, word for word. I wrote them down, and I put them in a, in a, in a tablet. And, and when I went to work, I carried those scriptures with me, and I would sit down. Instead of, you know, after I eat my lunch, I would get off by myself, and I would just read those scriptures over and over to myself. Amen. The next thing you know, I'm lying in my bed because I was real sick at the time. And that's why I had. That's why I did it. I was doing it for my own personal benefit, my own, my own personal use. And so when God, when when I was laying in my bed crying like a baby because I was in so much pain, God spoke to me very strong, very harsh. He said, "Get up and read my word." And I jumped up and I ran to the door because I thought someone was messing with me. But when I went to the door, there was no one there. And when I come back, going back to my bed, I ducked back around, tried to catch him. I went to the window that time instead of open the door. I went to the window to see like. And I jerked the cur curtain open real fast, see was somebody trying to mess with me, but, but there was no one there. And so God, I remember what he said to me, get up and read your Bible. And I know my brother and my sister, none of my friends would tell me to read my Bible because they was all, they thought I was a fanatic. They didn't, they didn't even want nothing to do with me. Amen. So I went and I sat down, I established my ironing board. I set up my ironing board because I didn't have a desk at that time. I set my ironing board up and I put my King James Bible, my I amplified Bible, my living Bible, and my Matthew Henry's Catcordy. And I began to read. And I began to read. Amen. Then when I get them on something that I didn't understand, I would go to the Amplified Bible. Then if that didn't give me the understanding I want, I would go to the Matthew Henry Catcordians and I would get the understanding that I was looking for. But when I was reading, when I was reading, I made it to Mark chapter 16. I made it to Mark chapter 16. And all of a sudden, in verse number 15, when God said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I mean, when I started reading from verse number 15 through verse number 18, the word the, the word of God started jumping. I mean, it just started jumping at me. And it, it and I had never experienced that before. But the word of God was just jumping, and I and, and, and every time it jumped, I would read it again because it made me feel good. And I would read it again. I mean, and then I read it again and again and again and again. And as I kept reading the word of God, and as I kept uh and, and it was and it was just like it was just like all of a sudden I began to understand what God was saying to me, and and then I said, "But God, I started I started trying to rationalize this thing. I said, "But God, you said that we should call for the elders," and He said, "Read it again." There was nothing in that scripture about elders, and I thought. Then I started talking again. I said, "But what about the prophets and apostles?" He said, "Read it again." He said, these signs shall follow them that believe, verse number 17. These signs shall follow them that believe. And I said, well, you know, I don't see the apostles in here. I don't see the elders in here. I don't even see the deacons in here. And he said, read it again. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. So I realized then that he was not talking about the apostles. He was not talking about the prophets. He was not talking about the evangelists, pastors, or teachers. He was not talking about the elders. He was talking to the one that believed in his name. He was talking to the one that believed in his name. And I said, oh my God, 
I see that. I read it so many times, but all of a sudden, I began to hear what God was saying to me as an individual. Now, that what really, that really touched my heart because I saw God was talking directly to me. Amen. That touched my heart. Amen. And so I said, okay, God, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. He's at verse number, he's at verse number 50. He said, he said, go, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And verse number 17 says, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, they shall not hurt them. And then in the latter part of verse number 18 says, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, my God, I had never saw it that way before. And I had read it so many times. Then all of a sudden, he said, read it again. So I read it again, and then again, and again. Then all of a sudden, I understood what God was saying to me. And that's why it's so important that you get this. Because you see, when the enemy comes up against you, you don't have no one there to pray for you. You don't, and you, and you don't know who you can call. Why not just take the word of God, read the word of God, meditate upon the word of God, then call upon the name of the Lord. Because he has proven himself to me time and time again that he was my healer. He was my deliverer. Everything that I need, I could always count on him. Amen. I could always count on him. And so I began to read the word of God. And all of a sudden, I, I, I saw what God was saying. So I laid my Bible down. And, I, and then I stood up in the, in, in my, in right there in my bedroom. I stood up. And I said, God, I see what you're saying. I said, my, my body is sick. And you said the believer shall let, the believer shall, who's there, he said, who's there believe in your name shall cast out devils and speak with new tongues and all this stuff. And I said, Lord, my body's sick. And I know this is not from you. This sickness doesn't come from you. It's the spirit of the enemy because of the lifestyle that I lived before I got born again. And so I realized that my sickness wasn't from God. And see, this is what you got to realize. The sickness that you're experiencing, God didn't give it to you. It didn't come from God. There's no sickness in, in God. When Jesus walked the earth, he never got sick. He always cured sickness and diseases. He cast out devils. Amen. Everywhere he went, he ministered to people. And that's what God wants you to understand right now. As you begin to walk in the authority of the word of God, the anointing is upon you to minister to the sick. It's upon you to minister to the sick. And I tell you what, I've been doing that ever since. I've been doing it ever since. Because when, when I said, God, you said, these signs shall follow them that believe in your name. I said, I'm a believer in your name. You said, the believer shall lay hands on the sick. Well, I shall first cast out devils. Amen. The believer shall cast out devils. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hand on my body. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. I rebuke this sickness off me right now in Jesus' name. And then I said, Father, you said, the believer shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Then I laid my hands on my body again. I said, in the name of Jesus, I command my body to be healed now. I release your healing anointing right now in my body in Jesus' name. Then all of a sudden, all the pain that I was experiencing in my body just disappeared. And I started looking. I said, oh, my God. Thank you. I said, oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. See, God wants you to have an experience so that you can minister to the sick around you. But first, you need to be healed. You need to be delivered. You need to be free. Amen. Glory to God. I want you to turn right with me right now to the book of uh to the book of, of Mark. Uh, no, no, the book of Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. I'm going to show you what Jesus told his disciples here. Amen. In Luke chapter 9. Right here in Luke chapter 9, look at verse number 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together, and he gave them power and authority. Notice what he gave them? Power and authority. See, God gave you power when you become a born again child of God, he gave you power. He gave you authority. Amen. And then, and then he's telling you what he gave it to you for. He said he gave it to you over all devils and to cure diseases. Amen. So when God give you, when God anoint you, he gives you power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And boy, I tell you what, it really works when you believe it. Now, if you don't believe it, if you're not working, that means you, you're probably not believing it. Amen. You probably not believe it, but when I believe this word, the word, the word began to manifest on my behalf, and God's word just, I mean, I just, God just showed Himself strong, Amen. And I believe He'll do the same thing for you if you would just believe Him. 
if you would just believe him, I believe he'll do the same thing for you. He'll, he will show himself strong on your behalf. Amen. Notice what he said again. Notice what he said again right here. In verse number one, Luke chapter nine, verse number one. Then he called his 12 disciples together. He gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Verse number two. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So who did he who did he send to heal the sick? He sent you as a believer. He sent me as a believer to preach the gospel and to heal the sick. Amen. And to heal the sick. Glory to God. Now I want to know something. Is is this is this thing still on Facebook back there? Go back and see. Because it looked like something going on. Amen. To heal the sick. Amen. So when we do that, huh? So God, God has given us the word now. So now it says in the book of Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8, that this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. See, God wants you to do what the word says. Amen. He wants you to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Amen. He wants you to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Because if you are just a hearer, then you're not doing. Amen. So it's not working, huh? Can't even talk to me now. Okay. Oh my God. And I'm halfway done. That's okay. Leave it alone. I'm not going to worry about it. Amen. Not going to worry about it. <clears throat> and so he says in the book of John, chapter 1, verse number 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt have, thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. See, you're not going to have success apart from the word. Amen. God wants you to minister the word. He wants you to believe what the word says, and he wants you to act upon it accordingly. Amen. When you believe the word, when you act upon the word, you're saying, God, your word is my bread and butter. <laughs> because this word is his word is, is God, God. He said what? Uh, the word, the healing is the children's bread. His, his healing is the children's bread. Where, where is his healing? It's in his word. It's in his word. Amen. So when I look at this, when I see what God is saying, I can, I can hold, I can hold God to his word because he said in verse number two, Luke chapter nine, verse number two, he said, he sent them to preach the gospel of the kingdom and to heal the sick. Amen. And to heal the sick. Amen. So now when I look at Luke chapter 10, in Luke chapter 10, verse number 1, Luke chapter 10, verse number 1, after these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place where he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest is truly great, but the labors are few. Amen. Look down at verse number 8. Verse number 8 says, and into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you, and heal the sick that are therein. Everywhere Jesus sent his disciples, he sent them to operate in the healing ministry. In the healing ministry. Amen. So God is telling us when we understand the authority that we have received of him as sons and daughters of God, we have received the ability to to minister to the sick. Amen. To minister to the sick. So now when I look at this, I, I can see what, what God what God is doing for me. Because when I was in Bible school, God told me when I was leaving now, he said, you're going back in the power of my spirit. And I want you to develop your teaching and your preaching ministry. This is what God told me when I, when I, was, when I was going to Bible school at that Rainbow Bible Training Center. Amen. He said, you're going back in the power of my spirit. And you and I want you to establish, to to your teaching and your preaching ministry. Amen. 
And so I, I did what God told me to do. And here I am today still doing what he told me to do concerning that. Amen. And he told me when I come to California, he said to focus on the meteor. That's why that's why you see me on, on these broadcasts here on the meteor because I'm just I'm following the, the instruction that I that I received of God. Amen. And God is just He's just showing himself strong. Amen. So now I want to tell you something here because I want you to I want you to see and understand that God is talking to you. If this generation is to be reached with the gospel of Jesus Christ, then we must, as a people, come to understand the authority that God has given us in the earth as believers. We, as believers, can minister to the sick. And we have to, re we have to believe what God said in his word. We have to release our faith. And we got, I'm telling you, if we, if we can believe it, the Bible says in Mark chapter 9, verse number 23, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. I want you to see what I'm saying. I want you to hear this from in your heart. Amen. If you don't understand, just put it on, put it on the back shelf. And then when you, when, you, when you have time, go back and pull it up again and begin to study it again. Begin to read it again. Begin to go over it again. Because see, God wants you to begin to walk in authority. He wants you to begin to minister to the sick. He wants you, notice what he said, don't be afraid of their faces. And look at look look with me again in Joshua. Look with me again in Joshua. Amen. Look with me again right here in, in, in the book of Joshua. I want you to look at chapter 1, verse number 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Amen. So if God's word in my mouth to speak healing, to speak deliverance, to cast out devils, then who am I to be afraid of the face of man? Who, what man is there can, can, can cause me to turn away from what God has said unless it's my own heart's desire to turn away from what God said? You see, I choose to believe God. I choose to stand on what God told me to do. I choose to walk in the authority that God has given me. And I choose to continue to preach and teach on divine health and healing. Because healing is the children's bread. Now right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I exercise divine authority over every sickness, over every disease, under the sound of my voice. I bind you by the spirit of the living God. And I break every demonic assignment and the power that is behind it off of the people under the sound of my voice right now in Jesus' name. Father, I release your healing anointing in the name of Jesus to drive out every spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease. I command it, come out now in Jesus' name. You've not been sent by God and the people don't have to tolerate you any longer. Why? Because God said in the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse number 4, Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him, stricken men of God, and afflicted. Verse number 5 said, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. We are healed. Amen. So if God said we are healed, then who are we to say, well, you know what? I still I, I still feel the pain. I still feel the, I still, oh my God, I still feel it. Yeah, you keep talking like that, it's going to continue to exist. But if you change your talk, you change your, your, your communicating, change what you're saying about your condition and start saying what God has said, your whole condition can turn and change just like that. Amen. How is it going to happen? Because, you see, as long as you talk about how bad you feel, as long as you talk about the symptoms and what you're going through, you magnify the sickness or the spirits that are behind it. But the moment you start saying, well, Jesus, you bore my sickness, you carried my disease, you sent your word to heal me, and by your stripes I'm healed, I'm saying what God said about me now. 
Why? What do you mean, Pastor? I'm lining my words up with what God said about me. When the doctor told me six years ago, when I, I, he said, uh, I've got good news for you and i got bad news for you. He said, the good news is that, I said, what's the good news? He said, the good news is that you're still alive. And I said, well, the bad news then, doctor. He said, the bad news is that I found cancer in your system. And that really caused my jaw to drop because I understand when, some, when a doctor or someone tell you, some bad news like that, how it make you feel, how it affect your heart. I understand that now. I didn't understand it before because I had never been told no bad news like that before. But when that doctor told me that I had cancer, oh my God, my faith just went right out the back door. I couldn't say nothing else for, for, for a while. Amen. All I could do is just nod my head. <laughs> okay, okay. You know, but then when I left out of that doctor's office, once I got on the outside, I looked up toward heaven and I said, God, that doctor just lied on me. <laughs> I said it just like that. I said, God, that doctor just lied on me. He said that I have cancer. Now, God, according to your word, you said in Psalm 107 verse 20 that you sent your word and you healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Well, God, cancer is destruction. And, and you said you sent your word to heal. I said, you sent your word to me. I received that word. That word is working in me right now. I don't receive what that doctor said. And I couldn't even go back. I couldn't even tell my wife what the doctor had said to me. I couldn't tell nobody what the doctor said to me. I only talked to God and I talked to the devil about those words. Why? Because they already heard it. Amen. And 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 and, and I just kept it to myself between me, God, and the devil. And then I went on a fast. And I began to pray. And I began to meditate on the word of God concerning healing. Just like I told you earlier. God said, meditate on his word. That's what I did. I began to meditate upon his word. I began to, I went on a fast, three-day fast. And, I, and I'm just reading and praying and talking to God and reading the word of reading the word of God on divine health and healing and talking to God. Amen. And then when my time, my nanny day was up, I had to go back to the doctor for my next checkup. I gave my blood. I went back to the doctor and he said, I got good news for you. Amen. I said, what's that? He said, I know what I saw when, when you was here the last time. But it's nowhere to be found in your system no more. It's gone. And I said, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He looked at me real shocked like, you know. Just like I was shocked when he said, you got cancer. He shocked me. So when I said, praise the Lord, thank you, I shocked him. <laughs> he wasn't expecting that. <laughs> so he got a shock just like I got a shock. Hey, Amen. I started praise God right in his office. And he got, he, got a, he got shocked from it. Hey, Amen. But at the same time, God was glorified. Because you see... Because I, I did not go around exercising, uh, talking about what the doctor had said to me. I didn't give life to it. Because had I went out talking about it, I would have given life to it. Now, I could, you know, I could have told someone to help them to pray about me, pray, help me to pray. But instead of me talking to anyone about it, I just talked to God. And I said, God, I said, God, I need prayer. I thank you right now for prayer. And so God began to pray, I began to pray, and, and God began to, God began to just manifest in my system. Amen. And he wants to manifest in your system. He wants to manifest in your body. He wants to manifest in your heart. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free. God sent his disciples out to minister to the sick, to heal the sick, to cast out devils. To raise the dead. He said freely you receive it. Freely give it. Now he meant what he said. And he said what he meant. Amen. So now it's your turn to receive God's promise in your life. It's your turn to receive God's best right now. And God's best for you right now is to be healed. God's best for you right now is to be healed and to be set free from whatever disease that the devil has placed on your body. God, he healed me of cancer. Amen. He healed me of migraine headaches. He healed me of, of ulcer. I mean, God healed me of so many things. Amen. So many things. Arthritis tried to get in my hands and all that stuff. I said, God, in the name of Jesus, this is not coming from you. I rebuke this arthritis pain. In the name of Jesus, I command to leave my hand right now. And all of a sudden, there's no pain in my fingers. Why? There's no pain in my joints. Why? Because I understand the power of the word. When you get this word in your spirit, when you allow this word to come alive in your spirit, when sickness come against you, 
when the enemy go come against your health, the word of God on the inside of you will, will rise up on the inside of you and raise up a standard against that enemy, that spirit of affliction. And that's what you want. You don't want to walk around talking about how sick you are. You want to walk around talking about how blessed you are. How you want to walk around telling people that you walk in divine health and healing. Because healing belongs to you. As a child of God, healing belongs to you. Amen. That's why Jesus went to the cross. He took our sin. Amen. He took our iniquities and our shame. He took our sickness and it was all nailed to the cross. Nailed to the cross. He bore my sin in his own body on the tree. And by his stripes, I am healed. 1 Peter 2, 24. God wants you healed. He wants you free right now. And I know some of you right now, you having issues in your chest. You having, uh, like, it, it, it looked like a cold, but it's not a cold. It looked like a flu, but it's not a flu. It's just something just clogging your chest. And right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I don't know who I'm talking to, but listen to me. Lay your hand on your chest right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I speak to the chest. I speak. I rebuke bronchitis right now in Jesus' name. I rebuke bronchitis right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Come out now in Jesus' name. And touch them no more. In Jesus' name. It's not a cold. It's not a flu. But you get clocked up sometimes. And in the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. Be healed. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Now just join me right now. Say, Father, I receive my healing. I receive my healing. Thank you, Father, for healing me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Sometime, when the enemy comes against you, you just try to you want to just go somewhere and just lay down and rest. You don't want to talk to no one. See, that's the devil trying to isolate you to keep you from receiving help. Don't be isolated. If you have to go to a quiet place, go to that quiet place to seek the face of God. Begin to pray. Begin to cry out to God. Begin to tell God. Amen. But make sure that when you're talking to God, let your conversation be in alignment with what God has said. That's why it's so important that we learn these healing scriptures. Get them in our heart. Get them in our heart and meditate upon them. Amen. Because God's word will deliver you because God's word is life. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, chapter 4 and verse number 20. My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear to my saying, let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart. Then he tells us why. For they are life to those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Amen. See, God knows his word will bring about the greatest manifestation of healing and deliverance in our hearts and in our lives if we only believe it. If we only believe it. So believe the word of God. Don't just say I believe it. Open up your heart and say, God, I choose to believe your word. Regardless of how I feel, you said that you bore my sickness and you carried my diseases and you said by your stripes that I am healed. I choose to believe what you said. I choose to walk in divine health. I choose to be healed right now in Jesus' name. I choose to be healed right now in Jesus' name. So be healed then. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. You don't have to accept what the devil tried to put on you. That devil's a liar. God's word has the final authority. Believe the word. Believe the word. Stand on the promise of God's word. Let the word manifest on your behalf. Let God be true and every man be a liar. Amen? Because God knows what he has planned for you and his plan for you is not for you to be defeated in life, but his plan for you is to put you over in life. Amen? To put you over in life. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. So when we operate in God's authority, we can operate in God's supernatural power, and we can release God's healing anointing over the people that he sent us to. Amen? 
I believe I'm sent to you today. I believe that I'm sent to you today by the Spirit of God. A few years ago, God told me to focus on the meteor. And so this is why you see in these messages right now. Because what God said to me, he said to focus on the meteor. So I'm focusing on the meteor to get this word out throughout the earth. There's people right now in different countries listening to this message. Amen. There's going to be a few people from different countries going to start, they, 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 they going, they, they going, they going to be writing me, asking me to come to them. You know what? November, I want to go back. I say October, in mid-October, end of, or the beginning of November, I want to go back to Pakistan again. And I'm asking God for the, the means to go back. Because I've started something over there, and I want to go back and continue on the work that I've begun there. Amen. And so it's time for us to take up an offering. My time is up. But I, I want to go back. I want to go back and, and continue the work that I've started there. And I want you, if God will, that you support this work. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you, Lord, that you would touch the heart of your people. And that those that will, Lord God, I ask you, Father, that you would cause them to be a part of this ministry by, and support us prayerfully, financially, in every area, Father, that we may need help. And I'm asking this in Jesus' name. Now, if that's you, you want to be a you want you want you want to be a sponsor toward this ministry to help us to go back to Pakistan once again. I'm asking you to sow your seed. You can go to my website, LarryBurkinMinistries.com. Amen. Or you can use your uh, cash app. Just type my name, Larry Bergen. Put that cash, put that dollar sign right there in front of my name, then Larry Bergens. Or you can use uh, your uh, you can use the uh, Glory to God. The Venmo, you can use Venmo, or you can use you can send it through the postal service. That's P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Amen. I believe that God wants to do something right now because it's getting darker and darker every day. And people are crying out for help. I'm telling you, I get I've been doing more ministry in, in Pakistan since I've been back home than I was when I was there. But I need to put I need to get foots on the ground back over there again. Back over there again. I need to, I need to go back again. And I need your support. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for raising up people that will get a hold of the vision to help minister to those children in Pakistan. And that they will see the need. That they will sow a seed in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. If anyone here need prayer right now, I'll pray for you. Anyone need prayer? How about salvation? You need to be born again? You need to, you need to uh, repent of your sin? Say this with me then. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit and renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died for my sin. I accept that today. Thank you for saving me. Amen. If you said that prayer, I believe right now that your day is going to be brighter and very brighter and brighter as you continue to go forward. I love you. God bless you. Until next time, this is Pastor Larry saying, be blessed. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.